Hi, I'm Kelsey Brennan Wessels for ESA Web TV, and I join you today from the sidelines of the ELA Berlin Air and Space Show. And I'm joined today by Anthony Brown, who is the chair of the Gaia Data Processing and Analysis Consortium. Now, today at ELA, the second batch of data from the Gaia mission has been released, and these data are being used to create the most accurate 3D map to date of our galaxy. Now, Anthony, what kind of information is Gaia providing about stars? So we provide uh, for 1.7 billion stars the uh, information on where they are on the sky. So you can just point at the star and say where it is. We tell you how bright the star is, but also what, it colors, what its colors are. Um, and more importantly, we tell you also uh, what the parallax and the proper motion is. The parallax is the um, apparent motion of the star uh, on the sky that is caused by us going around the sun. And the proper motion is a reflection of the fact that a star is actually moving uh, through space. And these two pieces of information, together with uh, another measurement that we do, which is the radial velocity of the star, uh, which is how, how the star is moving either towards us or, or away from us, uh, all this uh, tells us where the star is in three dimensions in space, so we can make a 3D map of the Milky Way, uh, and it also says how the star is moving in uh, three dimensions. And the colors of the star uh, tell us much more about the properties, for example, the age uh, of the star and its chemical composition. These are two very important things we want to know uh, in order to characterize stars themselves, but also to learn more about, for example, the formation uh, history of our, our Milky Way. Um, and what we also put out today is a catalog of about half a million stars that change brightness and color over the course of time, so-called variable stars. Uh, these are important because we can use them to measure distances out to uh, very far away in the, in the universe. Um, and then finally we have a modest sample of uh, asteroids in the solar system for which Gaia also measured very accurate uh, positions on the sky, which we can use to determine their orbits very um, accurately. Mm -hmm. Now why do we need this information? We need this information in order to uh, disentangle basically the formation history of our own uh, Milky Way. That's one of the main goals of Gaia, although it has applications in basically every branch uh, of astronomy. Um, and the idea is that uh, we think that the Milky Way was formed through the um, uh, merger of many small dwarf galaxies into one larger galaxy, or at least part of the Milky Way we think was formed that way. And what we want to do with Gaia is we want to go and look for those building blocks of the Milky Way. And one way we can recognize these stars uh, that were part of one of these building blocks that are now spread out all over the sky is by looking at their motions. And by analyzing their motions, we can notice, for example, that they're all on the same orbit uh, around the Milky Way. And that means that they were probably formed together and it probably came from one single uh, building block. And if we combine that with the information on the properties of the stars, in particular their age and chemical composition, then we can in fact make a time ordering of these events. And in that way we can basically do archaeology of our own Milky Way. Now of course you had a preview of the data that was released today. Was there anything in this data set that's new, that's different, a new discovery that we didn't know before? Yeah, so there was, uh, there was various pieces that were uh, shown this morning. Uh, one of them is the so-called uh, Hurstbrun-Russell diagram of the solar neighborhood uh, can be now be made in uh, much more detail than we did before. And this is basically a diagram where you uh, plot on the vertical axis the uh, brightness of the star, the absolute brightness, so that we need to know the distance for that. Um, and on the horizontal axis you plot the color of the star. And one of the things we saw is a, is a very large population of so-called white dwarfs. These are very small uh, stars, which are the end states of stars like our own sun, but they're uh, very compact, hot and blue in color. Um, and these uh, have been uh, obviously mapped uh, before, but now we have a sample of about 26,000 altogether in this one diagram. And you see very fine structures in how they are distributed in brightness and color. And this tells us much more about uh, the actual physics of those stars, so we're learning new things. Um, the other thing uh, that was uh, noteworthy today was uh, a map of the way the stars move in our own Milky Way disk. And what one can notice immediately there is that it's not a nice ordered uh, motion like the way the planets go around the sun, uh, but there seem to be disturbances. And uh, uh, the analogy was made this morning with uh, throwing a stone in a pond of water, you get all kinds of ripples. Um, and this has an effect on the velocities of the stars and, and that's what we think we could be seeing uh, in our own Milky Way disk. That one of the uh, dwarf galaxies that is in orbit around the Milky Way um, actually passed through the disk, uh, was disrupted in the process, and, and at the same time caused perturbations, which we see now in the velocity patterns of the stars. 
And then uh, finally, we also presented the, uh, for a set of so-called globular clusters and dwarf galaxies that are all in orbit around our Milky Way, uh, new determinations of their, of their orbits based on the motion measurements that Gaia made. Um, and from, on the basis of the motion of one of these uh, dwarf galaxies, we were able to make a new uh, mass estimate uh, of, the, of, the, of the Milky Way, uh, which is a little bit uh, on, on the low side, but still consistent with what is known. But this is the kind of analysis that will be refined in the future and hopefully you can say much more about the total mass of the Milky Way and, for example, how much dark matter there is. Uh, yeah. Now, I understand that Gaia is also tracking asteroids. Is this something that we could potentially use to maybe predict an asteroid coming in the direction of Earth? Yes, so uh, Gaia is actually very good at looking at near-Earth asteroids because it's looking in two directions where at the same time you cannot from the Earth study asteroids. The Earth, from the Earth you always have to look in the direction of the night sky and Gaia can look basically perpendicular to those two directions so it can cover the areas in space which are not covered from the ground. So should there be a near-Earth asteroid that would be missed from the ground, maybe Gaia will catch it. And it's very high accuracy uh, measurements of the motions of these objects will allow much better orbit predictions and thereby also much better risk assessment of these uh, for these near-Earth asteroids. Uh, uh, so yes, it uh, would be extremely useful. Now Gaia, of course, carries a billion pixel camera, if I understand correctly. We have a model behind us. This is a uh, 1 to 10 scale, so this is a tenth of the, the real size of Gaia. Can you show me where the camera is and why Gaia has this shape? Yeah, so um, the camera is in fact uh, over here. This is the back end uh, of the camera. So on the other side, you have the uh, CCD detectors, which, which we record uh, the light. And the way Gaia operates is that it has two telescopes that look at the sky in two directions at the same time, separated by about a 100 degrees angle. And that's why you have two openings to the, uh, in the spacecraft to let the light in. All the light is combined onto this uh, camera. Um, and we are trying to measure extremely uh, tiny angles on the sky, we're measuring positions of stars. And I have here a Euro coin. And what we're trying to do is, if you imagine that Gaia goes around the rim of the Euro coin, around the sun, and because of this motion uh, around the sun, we actually see the stars making little circles on the sky, and we try to measure the size of those circles to estimate how far away they are. Now what we're actually trying to do is to see this Euro coin lying on the moon from the Earth. That's how accurate Gaia can, can actually position stars in space. Now in order to do that, uh, the spacecraft has to be extremely stable. Nothing is allowed to move, uh, etc. Nothing is allowed to change temperature. And that's why we have this very large uh, sun shield uh, uh, on the spacecraft. So the sun is shining on the back of the sun shield in order to give us uh, energy. Uh, but this part of the spacecraft has to remain absolutely stable and in the cold. And this is the primary function of this uh, sun shield. Now what does the future hold for Gaia? So um, the nominal mission lifetime of Gaia is five years, and that actually ends in the middle of uh, next year, in uh, July 2019. And, but we've already asked for a mission uh, extension until the end of 2020, and it uh, looks very likely that we will get the approval for this. Um, and we think we can go on until the middle of 2024, because that's when the fuel to keep the uh, uh, spin rate of Gaia very constant uh, runs out, and then we cannot really continue doing the observations uh, the way we are doing them now. Now, if we manage to get the extension all the way out to 2024, that will mean we have doubled the lifetime from five to 10 years. And this is very interesting, not so much in the sense that we will get more stars, if we will observe the same stars, but all the measurements will be much more accurate. For example, the motion measurements will be, go up in accuracy by, by about a factor of three. Um, and also uh, Gaia is, for example, capable of detecting exoplanets around stars by looking at very tiny deviations in the motion of the star across the sky. And by doubling the uh, lifetime of the mission, we can also detect many more um, exoplanets. So it's, uh, it's really in a very exciting possibility to make sure that this thing lasts for the 10 years that, uh, that it can. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, I would just uh, like to thank again the uh, colleagues around Europe in the Gaia Data Processing and Analysis uh, Consortium, who together with ESA have done the uh, data processing for, uh, for this mission. It's an effort of uh, 450 uh, scientists, software engineers, etc., who have put in, in many cases, well over 10, 15 years of their careers uh, into, into this effort. And it's really thanks to their excellence that I can stand here today and present the uh, second release of, uh, of Gaia. And of course, we're looking forward to the more scientific results from the release, that's data release. Thank you so much for joining us today. And to our viewers, remember that to learn more about space or about Gaia, about our stars, visit our website at www.isa.int.